So the paper that I read was Neural Adaptations to Resisted Exercise Mechanisms and Recommendations for Training Practices by Dr. Gabriel of Brock University in Canada. And he talks about how there can be increases in muscular strength without an actual size increase in muscle mass. And this shows that there's involvement in, by your neurons and they can adapt to strength exercises. These strength gains of, can be noticeable from the first time someone works out and does strength training. Usually, ma muscle mass does not begin to grow until week eight, but although people are able to gain much strength between when they start working out in the eighth week, this shows that there is some sort of adaptation in the muscles and to be able to gain that strength, and he says that this is due to neural adaptation. So, he was able to record muscle activity, neuron activity, uh, by using surface recorded electromyography to, and he found that after just the first tra strength training session that there is an amplitude increase well before there is muscle size increases which shows that the neurons are firing much quicker. He talked about how subjects that went, underwent an eight week uh, muscle res resume were they were they took e SEMG uh, of the muscles on the first day at 48 hours and during the eight week period. At the 48 hours, the muscle rate at which they spired was almost twice as much, and this he said was because of neural adaptation. But at the eight week mark, when muscle mass has increased and muscle gains are now because of muscle mass. He said that firing rate went down to normal levels. So the authors talked about how during rehab and strength programs, it's very important to take into account not only muscle mass gains, but also the rate at which neural adaptation occurs and all the firing of the motor neurons. That that should be very important too. So he talked about how people who are in rehab should do certain types of stretches like isometric stretching to provide a strength base for the muscles without straining muscles that are already injured. He recommended lengthening contractions in the early stages of rehab for people who have uh, muscles that are very, the surrounding muscles are weak. So this allows for strength to be gained without actually firing the motor neurons very much during that uh, um, same exercise. So in conclusion, he said that because of neural mechanisms, there is increases in firing rates and that these changes can drive the motor neurons to increase an individual's muscle strength from the first training session and that people should take into account the neural adaptation of muscle building and muscle weight training rather than just the muscle mass aspect of it. Titles like that can be kind of intimidating, but the results from such studies help progress the scientific world. For instance, this particular study looked to differentiate potential antidepressants from false positives. How? By coupling behavioral and neurochemical analyses of a rat during a forced swim test. Very good point. However, it has been shown in other studies that the therapeutic effects of antidepressants take the same amount of drug therapy time for rats and humans, thus suggesting that the rat model can be used for heuristic value in human studies. The antidepressants cause a rapid neural adaptation during the forced swim, which points to adaptive measures of the human brain. The results of the study were concluded from data of a beta-adrenergic binding assay done on dissected brain portions from the rat. Injection of the antidepressant after a test swim caused a reduction in the time that the rat was immobile during the forced swim. This corresponds to less beta-adrenergic binding in the rat. 
Those rats who were not given the injection did not show the reduction in immobility or binding to the forebrain. The rapid downregulation of the beta adrenergic receptors in the forebrain structures suggests that the actions of antidepressant drugs interact with the behaviors of the forest swim to facilitate adaptive mechanisms similar to those observed after chronic antidepressant treatments. In conclusion, this study showed neural adaptation in the presence of antidepressant injections through behavioral and chemical analyses. This and future studies will improve the search for new and effective antidepressant drugs and treatment strategies.